I waited for Nico to come back to bed in the midday San Fernando Valley heat. Downstairs, I knew that my roommates, Larry, a lump of a Chris Farley type, and Francisco, an aspiring entrepreneur Asian genius, were sitting side by side on our couch watching television. As I heard her footsteps trail off, I pictured their open mouths as they turned to watch her head into the kitchen, fill a tall glass with ice cubes, and walk back past them with a mischievous wave. This was my last summer before graduating college, and for once, my life felt like an after-school special. Our rented four-bedroom, two-story condo faced the busiest street in Northridge, California, just up the block from my first girlfriend's apartment building that in six months would famously collapse in a 6.7 earthquake. I knew she'd survived when I saw her standing behind someone getting interviewed on the national news. She was nice enough to end my dateless drought after 18 long, lonely years, but it wasn't until after I dated Monika a sultry Polish foreign exchange student that I actually had some confidence with girls. <laughs> no side boob. They suddenly seemed attainable. I had a little bit of game or so I thought, and as pale and skinny as I was, I even finally started to take my shirt off in public. <laughs> One blazingly hot afternoon, I needed a break from the air conditioning and headed to our swimming pool. When I got there, it was empty except for one girl swimming by herself. It felt a little creepy to not acknowledge this, so I simply said, I'm gonna need a little more room here. <laughs> so I started talking to this curvy girl with dark hair and darker eyes that couldn't have been more than a few inches over five feet. Nico was visiting some friends who were my neighbors, apparently. We were talking about music when the band Yaz came up. She stopped mid-sentence when I nodded in approval. Wait, you know who they are? I've never met anyone that knows Yaz. I'd been waiting my whole life for useless music trivia to impress a girl. <laughs> An 80s British synth pop written by a homosexual was apparently my in. Thank you, Vince Clark. I loved you in Depeche Mode. But I never liked Erasure. We talked until the sun went down and walked to the hot tub where I saw a lizard tattoo peek out onto her breast from under her bathing suit. I relaxed and closed my eyes, not thinking anything was really going on, but then from under the bubbles, I felt a foot on mine. I looked up and got a grin. After a while, she had to leave, but insisted we meet there again the next day. When I got back to the apartment, I told my roommates what had happened, and they were shocked. I was as surprised as they were. When the afternoon came, when the next afternoon came, I made sure to wait a minute or two to not seem too eager. Nico played it cooler, showing up 10 minutes later. <laughs> In asking more about her life, I had no idea what to believe. She was a guest model. She'd played Gary Coleman's friend as a child on different strokes. She knew the guys in Jane's Addiction. The bruises on her leg were care of Polly Shore. <laughs> if even half of it was true, she'd done more in her 19 years than I probably ever would. This girl was way out of my league, but she still seemed interested somehow. She invited herself back to my place and we talked more before she excused herself to go and asked for my number. I told her to call anytime. I had no idea how to get a hold of her or which apartment she was staying in, so I waited. A couple of nights later, she called. Did I want to grab Taco Bell or something? <laughs> my bank account sighed, a, a, a breathed sigh of relief. After fine dining, we talked for a long while in my bedroom, <laughs> then on my bed, then with her on top of me. In listening to her Hollywood runaway tales, it was more than obvious that she looked to me as something safe, something she could trust. She was taking her time, but I was in no rush. I wanted to remember exactly what that moment felt like because there was no way that a girl like this should have been interested in a guy as straight-laced as me. I had longish hair, <laughs> but I was boring. I'd never done anything that this girl would find exciting. I didn't even drink. I actually kept thinking she was going to get up and leave any second, but she didn't. So began the long, hot season of uncertainty. If Nico wasn't staying with my neighbors, she was crashing with any number of odd friends and acquaintances. She had my number. I rarely had hers. Soon, she started spending the night, but I never saw her for more than an evening or two at a time before she had to go do something... vague. 
things I wasn't invited to and probably didn't want to know about. Occasionally in Tijuana. I hate the offspring. But when they sang, I wait till two, then turn out the light, I understood completely. I get you! That one's the singer, right? Okay. You can tell. That was my summer. I felt like I barely even knew her from what little she told, told me, but I couldn't say no to a girl like this. She was stunningly beautiful and a dead ringer for my celebrity crush, Sherilyn Fenn. Sometimes I'd just stare at her and wonder how they could be two different people. My roommate, Francisco, remembers me comparing them. I was never really sure if her eyes were actually striking or if they were more hypnotic in the way that they seemed kind of empty, he recalled. <laughs> I was mesmerized enough to put up with not having any idea what the hell was going on. I figured if there were some serious problems in her life and I was a safe haven from that, then it could only be a good thing. She was certainly not shy about keeping me interested. On a long drive back from Redondo Beach, she stripped her clothes off in the passenger seat and took turns covering and uncovering herself with my jacket. Once she came out of the shower to find me in the hallway talking to my roommate who was lying out of view and on his bed. So she stepped back into the bathroom and... She made it very difficult for me to maintain eye contact. <laughs> Did I mention the ice cubes? Because that was actually my idea, but... We decided to consummate our relationship one day and she saw that I was a little embarrassed buying protection at the drugstore, so she grabbed the condom box from me and waved it above her head all the way to the front counter. I'm still mortified that the checkout lady might have figured out what we were gonna do with them. At least they were magnums. Right, honey? As secretive as she was about so many things in her life, the bad parts eventually came up. Again, I didn't know what was true and what wasn't. She'd done topless dancing in Seattle, but didn't do that kind of thing anymore. The local dance troupe that she was in now actually danced. When I saw a spray-painted sign hanging from a freeway overpass with her name on it, she said, oh, that's just a friend of mine. Everywhere we went, she'd run into people she knew. Not in some small town, the second biggest city in the country. It was mind-boggling that anyone could know so many people. So many sketchy people. <laughs> One of them was an organized crime, not that I should be worried, and I probably should have mentioned that. She has no ties to organized crime. Um, <laughs> with friends like these, it sure wasn't difficult to be the nicest guy she'd ever dated. When she kept asking me to give her my custom-made Sesame Street book, I was given as a child with all of my own information typed into the story. I finally photocopied the whole thing and made one all about her, with what little I knew. She giggled as she turned the pages, but was mostly speechless and then quiet. She said it was the best thing anyone had ever given her. Still, it felt strange to say we were dating when I usually had no idea where she was or what she was doing. But every once in a while, I'd find something I doubted was actually true. I saw Polaroids of her with other models at a shoot and some of her gas advertisements. There she was, in a white wig, but it was definitely her. But then, while watching television at a friend's house, I saw a special undercover news story about teams of feuding girls that were getting into strip competitions at warehouse parties filled with gang members. <laughs> Nico's dance troupe was mentioned by name. <laughs> I was so proud. <laughs> we only take our tops off, she explained later. Plus, I don't do that anymore. I was hardly surprised when she mentioned knowing people in the adult film industry. Oh yeah, I get asked all the time, she said. If I ever wanted to, I could pick my partner. <laughs> when she said that she couldn't wait for us to both get tested so we could have unprotected sex, I immediately flashed on Leslie Nielsen and Priscilla Presley wearing full bottom <laughs> con body condoms in the movie The Naked Gun and wondered if they really existed. <laughs> Nico told me that she loved me and called me her boyfriend, but I started to feel more and more like I was just a hotel. I've always been a sound sleeper, but this girl could sleep. Sometimes I couldn't wake her up. 
and would have to take a scared second, lean in, and look close to make sure she was still breathing. She was coming down off of something, but would never admit it. All of my friends were trying to guess what she was on. Crystal, Coke, heroin. I smoked pot once. <laughs> I got sleepy. <laughs> she kept calling and showing up, though less and less frequently. Sometimes she would suddenly make an issue out of nothing as an excuse to storm off and disappear for a few days. When I went away to Europe with my family for a couple of weeks, she made a scene on my way out the door, and I found myself relieved to take a break. As I settled into my seat on the plane and tried to forget about months of drama, I took a deep breath and grabbed a magazine. The very first page I turned to was a Ray-Bans ad she had done. I must have stared at it for five minutes thinking, this is not happening. <laughs> not long after I got back, I got a call from a friend of hers who obviously didn't approve of me because I didn't fit into their freak scene. How old did Nico tell you that she was, she asked. I gulped. Well, she's only 17, she said, and hung up. Suddenly, I had broken the law. I had broken the law with someone who knew a lot of people that scared me. She scared me. What, Nico shrugged the next time we talked. It's not like I'm going to yell rape. That hadn't occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though splitting up with her could very well push her into doing something dangerous, either to herself or me or both, I couldn't continue on. Not that I had any idea what was really happening. She burst into tears when I told her how I felt and finally admitted that she was addicted to drugs but was going to get clean. Her father was ready to send her away to Greece to dry out. Did I think she should go? I'd never made a decision even a fraction as important as this. She wanted advice from someone sane, someone who she, who she thought had her, their shit together. But being asked about something this huge made me feel young. <laughs> Helpless. I had barely done anything with my life, and my parents were paying my way through college. What did I know? How did I ever think I could save her? I said that I just wanted her to get better, and she just couldn't do that in the world that she was traveling in. Maybe getting away was what she needed. She wanted to have someone to get better for, but knew she shouldn't be dragging me through her mess anymore. She asked to see me one more time, and I agreed. I went to her friend's house where she was staying, and we stood outside the darkness with her in my arms, knowing that we'd probably never see each other again. We didn't say anything for a long while, but just as I started to say goodbye, suddenly there was a screech of brakes and a pickup slammed into a car just up the block. We ran over to find a frantic mother, a wide-eyed boy in the back seat, and a truck driver who knew he was in trouble. We did our best to calm down the mom, goof with the kid to keep him distracted, and make sure that angry truck guy didn't bolt. Ten minutes felt like an hour, but red and blue lights finally flashed over us, and the sounds of cop chatter filled the air. We couldn't even split up without it looking like a crime scene. Nico wouldn't let go of me, but there was still a part of me that didn't want her to. It took a few tries, but after more tears and a kiss goodbye, I finally walked away, got in my car, breathed deep, and drove away without looking back. I felt my past life fading away behind me. I was graduating college in a few weeks and moving to the Bay Area to start over with nothing. What an ending. All these years later, I'm still pretty boring. Look at me trying to convince a room full of hipsters holding beers about how crazy it was to date a girl who did drugs. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> Didn't teach me to stop doing things with girls I probably shouldn't have, but none of them offered to get me into porn quite as sweetly as she did. <laughs> Nico managed to track me down every few years, either by leaving a message with my parents or finding me online. Though her modeling career didn't exactly end up that way, she says she got clean after our summer together. She doesn't think of it as a phase, but doesn't remember a lot of details about that time either. To her horror, she lost the Sesame Street book, not long after we dated and begged me to make her another. It took me 20 years, but I finally got around to it. Thank you.